Mars, you're not going to have a, a water cooled deluge system on Mars. How do they prevent it there? That's the biggest concern and worry. And perhaps a, a trench on Mars makes more sense. Yeah, that would make more sense. And how would they build? They would have to basically transport water. They could also build water on Mars. They can, they can make the water on Mars in situ, but that's going to take a lot of work. The Mars has water. It's just right. of getting it's it and finding it, it down and cleaning it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge problem, but if they've solved it. If they solve it on earth, then they can, we, they can tweak it to work on other planets. I'm sure it's just like how much effort would it take to get that water for the deluge system? And is it worth it to do all that think, work? Yeah. I, I mean, Mars, you just, just leave a starship, just leave as it. As much water as Mars perhaps has, I don't think you're wasting any of it to launch a ship. I think you need another solution. Yeah. But I think it's been proven here on earth, at least that just simply having a pad underneath is not going to be enough to protect the Raptors, to protect the inside of the ship, protect yeah. the pad itself. Even though things on Mars weigh a lot less, of course, like a six, six, no, I mean, that's, that's forgotten, but they weigh less. So it's going to take less thrust to get off of the ground, but there's still going to be for a starship. There's still going to be how many engines are they putting on starship now? I can't even remember. I can't keep up. Is it, is it <laughs> They're just going to keep adding them. Engines? It's nine now, but nine engines. So by the time they get to Mars, it'll be so. 13, maybe yeah. who knows <laughs> 50, who knows? It's still going to be a lot of engines. So. Yeah. I think that it needs to be, and I said this before, it needs to be a hundred percent. Yeah. Reliability every time. If there can't be any sort of, well, it works most of the time. That's not good enough. It needs to be a hundred percent every time. Yeah. Especially when you start sending people, as we were saying, the, this is OFT2 or IFT2 or integrated flight test two, it's not going to be reliable. It's going to be great if it does everything that it needs to do, but it's, you got to, take these things with an engineering mindset of you're going to learn a lot of stuff from failure. And every time you fail, you learn. So every time you learn, things get better. So IFT1, not that great. Like it was cool. And they got pretty far. IFT2, hopefully they do better. Yeah. And they do have a new component, which is that hot fire, hot, yeah, the hot fire stage. Now, uh, are we going to be launching so, hot fire on this rocket, the second test? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't I mean, think at all. Because booster not and maybe ship twenty five certainly aren't set up for it. Yeah, not that we know of. There is a possibility that they can retrofit right? it. They've just put a yeah. There's obviously still the ability to retrofit. I think it's probably you know more or less adding another ring or two to the booster. Yeah, is seems to be what the test object looks like. Yeah. Now who knows what that means in general? Now the hot fire is interesting because you've got all these flames obviously hitting the top of the booster they're going to have some vents for the flames to get out of the booster like the top of the booster but you've got things at the top there's the batteries are up there right yep. for running the, the griffins and whatnot there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be protected at the top of that booster it should be interesting to see how that all gets dealt with it's the pictures yep. i've seen of the the test article for the hot fire hot stage is uh, you can still see the dome through these little vets. So it's not like they're, they've got like a special covering on top. So very curious to see those tests. So we're certainly not going to be, I don't think hot firing on the second test. I think it'll just be regular. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I've seen the hot fire staging, the mechanism. So I know that it's there. But will they wait for the next one just so they can figure out the Raptors and figure out the launch cadence yeah, and things like that? they've got a lot to do still. Yeah, I'm not sure, but you never know. That's the other thing too. Like you never know if they're just going to be like, well, we're going to go for it uh, because enough. we need to. Because the first one yeah. didn't work at all. <laughs> we didn't separate and we didn't get, we didn't explode it. So the TRS didn't quite work well. Maybe they're just going to move forward, get a better one get a better TRS and then get the, uh, get the hot fire staging. I don't know though. So that's another, we don't know. Nobody really knows what they're going to do on there for sure, but uh, it's still very cool. It's, it's very, a very cool. cool process. Yeah. Uh, I remember during one of the, during the launch tests, there was a shot of underneath the Raptors while they're being chilled, which is pretty cool to see all these sort of pictures that we get out of this are really awesome. You yeah. can see the Raptors are all chilly and white and ready to go. And another cool thing is the satellite. 
So you were talking about this earlier and how they're dismantling yeah. these satellites. Yeah, last week they got rid of one satellite and just yesterday, really, they got rid of the last one, the second one. So these used to be, they used to basically point directly at the launch facility when for launches. <laughs> and, uh, and I assume they were getting all kinds of data and whatnot, but now they're gone. As of the, today, they're gone. Not sure whether they're going to replace it with something more, more modern or whether it was just old tech they don't need anymore. Maybe they've replaced everything that these were doing. Maybe they replaced it with sensors or cameras or drones or who knows what. Yeah. So maybe they're just obsolete. Maybe. Not sure. They do have, uh, they do have permission from the FC to launch Starship with basically communications from the ship back down to Starbase. So that could be via Starlink. So they might not need these because Starlink works so good. And they may have proven that the first round IFT1 was just like, hey, this works perfectly. Let's keep doing this. We got to get rid of these giant dishes so we can make room for other cool stuff. Like for sure, a visitor center <laughs> for me to go get a hamburger at. Like that would be cool. Or maybe a production facility like the one in the background there. That yeah, they're building, looks like, they're going um, crazy like they're with the building. For one of the manufacturing buildings, so uh, the machines that build the machines, as they were. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's going to be huge. That's a huge building. Yeah, it's a huge building. The machine that builds the machines, they'll be able to crank, like whip these things out. Once they get this, it's a conveyor belt at some point. It's like a, it's like they have all this engineering goal, right? prowess want, from like this. building cars at Tesla. Yeah. Exactly. And they just go like, how do we build a big tube? in that fashion and also the Raptors too, but those things, the important.